question. Which is the most common heart arrhythmia you all are aware of? So for humans, which is the most common? Ah, uh, sorry. Fibrillation, atrial fibrillation. Right. And how about its treatment? Which is the which is the best treatment in terms of success rate? Right. Right, Dr. Humer. So which which therapy gives the highest success rate? You all are aware of. Tell me, if a atrial fibrillation patient has come, how will you ensure that which method you know of, which treatment method you know of, which will give the maximum success rate to the AF patient? So you already know if, so, ah, oh, come on, we are in 21st century. Humans are trying to go to even Mars. Man mission to Mars. Ablation therapy? What? Yes, right. Ablation therapy. That's what I want to say. So this is a classical ECG of a, how atrial fibrillation looks. Right, right. Dr. Humer, I will tell you. So not only if the patient gets AF, what happens is there is triple risk of heart failure, double the risk of dementia, four to five times the risk of stroke and then overall mortality with AF itself is quite a lot high and in fact its incidence rate with increasing age as well tends to become very very high as I said it if someone is in 80s almost every fourth person is going to have this problem and as you may see over here the incidence Compared to the other diseases, maybe less, but when it comes to mortality and morbidity, it is one of the highest. So you all have already smartly answered about the cheapest treatment for atrial fibrillation. So, okay, so for the atrial fibrillation, a small question. Which is the cheapest treatment you will prefer to give by drugs, defibrillation or catheter ablation? Which is the cheapest? way to treat atrial fibrillation ablation oh my god i want to know this person's name what is his name who has said ablation Man. huh and why do you think ablation so one time sir yes right so what has happened is there are studies, there may be recurrences as well. It's not a foolproof therapy, but I'll show you the benefits. So there are scientific studies, what has been happening. At the end of around two year follow-up, the cost of the antiarrhythmic drugs or the medita medication and even ablation therapy tends to be the same. Please mute your microphones. Others, please mute your microphones. I'm hearing a lot of noise. Please mute your microphone. Someone's cell phone is on, I think. Okay. So what I was telling is antiarrhythmic drugs has been outdated and catheter ablation should be the first line treatment for these AF patients in fact. And normally in cardiology it is said, said that time is muscle but even in EP as well time is muscle. So especially for these AF patients as well if you don't treat them early they are going to develop cardiomyopathy and all those other complications as well. In fact, now we have more than more than 35 studies which have shown that you can get more than 80% success rate. Success rate. And in fact, even with 
uh, ablation sources like cryo balloon as well, you can have a wonderful success rate. So this is a, a list of studies. Of course, one of my favorite ones is you know the number thirty, which is my own study. Okay. So the other thing as well, as I had said, yes, you can not only achieve sinus rhythm. See someone's yes. Now I can feel the difference. Please mute your microphones when you are not using it. Is it Bilal or Anbalagan? Whose microphone is on? P.S. Rivali. No, I think, okay, it is VR Chaudhary and Waris. Waris, please mute your microphone. Waris and VR Chaudhary. I can hear your microphones are on. Waris. Waris and Mr. VR Chaudhary, Dr. VR Chaudhary. Your two microphones are on. I think they are not even aware. Gosh, terrible, terrible. Okay, anyways, we'll try to continue with you. Waris, mute your microphone. And Chaudhry, mute your microphone. So this is from Waris. Now it seems like more likely. I would really ask the program coordinator that next time the person should not be allowed if they are behaving irresponsible like this anyways so as i was telling you the main reason for ablation is not only to make the sinus rhythm but also those air episodes to make them asymptomatic so once ablation has been done the uh, the asymptomatic AF episodes increase significantly from almost 5% to almost 37%. And in fact, even if uh, uh, after the ablation has been done, those episodes also become asymptomatic. So not only there is decrease in number of episodes, but also those episodes become much more asymptomatic in fact. And now there are some newer data as well in which it has been shown, for example, which you can see it over here. This is literally from November 2017, just two months back. And it came in JAMA, uh, Journal of American College of Cardiology, JAC actually. So what, uh, what happened is, the success rate is almost more than 90%, a one-year success rate in fact. So I, I think in coming days to come, we will be seeing a lot of things as well. So all you know how the iPhone had has evolved literally from the first generation to 3G, f uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 as well now. Similarly, on the other side, pacemaker was also becoming smaller, much more advanced and much more lighter as well and much more powerful. So similarly, on the ECG as well, do you remember who is this gentleman in the photo? So this is Eindhoven. Yeah, because there are a few people whose microphone is on. I feel sorry. Waris. The, Waris is the guy who's... Yeah. Now finally Waris has muted it. And Chaudhry as well. Great. No, really. Waris and Chaudhry. This is not good actually on your behalf. Putting up your microphone on like this and everyone gets disturbed as well. Anyways. So this is, on this, when you see this, this is the first ECG, how the first electrocardiogram was recorded by Eindhoven. And then now things has been changing. So you can even record your ECG using a smartphone as well. So this is, this apparatus is called as a life code. And now in fact, not only you can uh, over your smartphone but even your smart watches as well you can do it 
And now, in fact, you can visualize your arrhythmias or ECG as well in form of different color codes. And this is, and now uh, the television has been becoming your high definition as well. So similarly, you can even see them in high definition, in higher resolution. And if you can see them better, you can treat them better as well. Oh. So now one more simple question, which has, which way or which procedure has the highest success rate for AF treatment? Is it catheter ablation? Is it Cox Smith's procedure or antiarrhythmic drugs? Cox Smith, I'll tell you now, for example, this is the surgical method. This is the surgical method of uh, AF ablation treatment. So which method has the highest success rate? No. Uh, okay, I, I will tell you tell you exactly the main reason. So what happens is Cox maze has the highest success rate. But the problem is Cox maze is a surgery, open heart surgery. You know, you need to open the heart, you need to do all those things. So most of the times, that's why they were using cox maze only when open heart surgery is needed, for example, like a bypass surgery or mitral valve replacement surgery. So then when the open heart surgery is being done, so they will try to do cox maze as well with that. So that is one of its significant limitations for that. And then, so that is why the best way, what if you can do the cox maze using your catheter itself? And that was the that's what has been tried actually. This was when I was visiting the Harvard Medical School in uh, almost 2014 in Boston. So I'll be going there again in June as well for one month on a scholarship. So this is what is called as the hybrid approach. So in hybrid approach, what you do is using the mini lap, you go and open the pericardium, epicardially ablate them, and endocardially check them. And if needed, you go and give focal touch-ups. And this is another uh, depiction how those lines are combining or helping each other. So this is the beauty of the hybrid approach. In the sense, hybrid approach, you try to put the good points of surgical ablation and the endocardial ablation together. And you get the best possible success rate for the patient. And uh, I had also tried to use some of these principles for adenosine testing. Adenosine, you all know, right? What do you use adenosine actually? So what are the usage of adenosine actually? PSVT. Yes, PSVT and... Great, great. And what else? What are the other usage of adenosine? What are the other places where adenosine is used? So it has been shown that you after atrial fibrillation ablation has been done, if you try to inject adenosine, you may be able to see the dormant reconduction. I, uh, among these people who are attending today's session, how many people were there? How many? Yes, right. Absolutely right. Very good. Very good. So, how many people were there who attended the session for the article writing? Or capstone project writing? How many people had attended that session? At least use the chat box. Yes. So did you read this paper? I'm happy to see at least few people are present. I, I, I'm sure there were more people present from this batch. But it takes a lot of guts as well to say yes. So now you have to say, did you read this paper? I had shared it with you guys, right? So what is the speciality of this paper actually? Oh, 
What is the speciality? No one read, I think. Was it so? What is the speciality of this paper? So what has happened is whenever you try to a lot of times if you are in confusion no so what do you do you try to refer to the expert consensus statement right or guidelines the standard guidelines you try to go and follow isn't it so have you all read about this have you all heard about this expert consensus document on AF ablation Anyone has heard about it? No one has heard about these expert documents, is it? Whenever you are in doubt, what do you do? You go and read the journals, you try journals yes if you want to know the latest things but other than that there are expert consensus statements as well those documents are there those guidelines are there where you go and read them and what happens is in 2007 guideline this paper was cited the ATSCS study my paper actually so it was cited so what I mean is it was one of the landmark papers for atrial fibrillation ablation so that's why it is important and it is just last year because the last joint expert consensus guidelines had come just like few months back actually so like last year itself in 2017 which has just passed so that's why it is very important you all should read whatever i'm telling and yes you all can go and uh, subscribe to the youtube channel or otherwise even on this facebook page as well for to get regular updates you should also should try to read not just that you know one lecture is over then you are done no that's not the way you have to go revise it again and again more you revise more you are able to understand go and read what the paper is written so that's all if you'll be having a habit of reading these articles then you will be knowing how to write a good capstone project as well. You can even go and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well when you will search with my name, Prof. Dr. Narendra Kumar. And then you can read it. Read. I would really suggest try to have a habit of reading actually those articles, new articles, what is happening in the scientific world. So then you will be able to understand it much better. So are there any questions so far? It brings me to the end. End of the session. So are there any questions?